Hello everybody, Monty here. Um, this is an experimental episode, kind of similar to the Ohio Helper episode submitted by Razzy Girl. This is a little different in that we are experimenting with a fan submission from Patreon, essentially um, one of my patrons who sends me like five bucks every month um, had this idea that he wanted more fleshed out that kind of spawned from the fictional Russian invasion and annexation of Alaska that was hinted at in one of the lore-based episodes. And he sent me this screenplay, and I looked it over, and I kind of took some bits that I could work into a narrative that's more close to the kind of stuff I do. I did the research on the culture and the landscape, at least as much as I needed to, and I basically edited what he had, wrote what I could, and I'm going to voice it and publish it. And this is going to be an experiment where we see how well this does. If this does go over well, we might be doing more of this in the future. So you will see um, potentially the regular Letters from 2035 content and the Dome content alongside more fan submissions. Um, it's kind of a cool system where if I have the time, it basically means that I can have more variety of content and I don't just have to post my own narratives, my own stories, and the stuff that I write myself necessarily, and I can flesh out things that other people want to see fleshed out, so long as there's an outline or a framework there. Um, in this story, the concept comes from at WarGunny on the Discord, and we're going to see how this goes. And again, if it goes well, we'll do more of it. If it doesn't necessarily, we still might do some more of this in the future, but it might be a good way to drive up Patreon support or make sure things stay fresh so that it's not just the same content or similar content for too long. But we're just going to let this roll and we'll see how it does. Fox, Alaska, winter 2034. The thunderous behemoth shuddered around him as it struggled through the snowpack, a five-ton war machine churning through ice with a half dozen of its last surviving brethren. In the rear seat of the crew compartment, Colonel Jack Wolf could hear his driver cooing and coaxing the ancient vehicle while it negotiated the terrain. Come on, baby. It's okay. Daddy's got gotcha. you. Colonel Wolf relaxed as far as his parka and combat kit would allow him to in the bucket seat. Designed and produced in the Cold War era, the small unit support vehicle was never intended to be comfortable. Instead, its sole mission was to move itself and its cargo through the worst terrain possible with its two trailers and four active tracks. Specialist, this bitch is twice as old as me. If it's gonna bust, it's gonna bust. Wolf chuckled while reaching out to clasp the driver on the shoulder. The driver's face was dimly illuminated by the sickly green backwash of a night vision monocular scope. The young guardsman didn't take his attention from the darkness ahead of the vehicle as he responded to his commanding officer. Respectfully, sir, if anything here is busting, I'd love to. The five other soldiers in the front pod of the SUSV chuckled. The good humor, a comforting respite. After nine months of grueling guerrilla warfare, everything was in short supply. Food, ammunition, fuel, and especially shelter. But what worried Wolf the most was less tangible than bullets and bandages. A deficiency of morale was the real threat eating away at the men and women under his command. Even in the blacked-out cabin of the SUSV, Wolf could feel the desperation that had taken a hold of his soldiers. He was sure that all throughout the vehicle column, the same sensation of dread clogged the air of every crew compartment. No one wanted to be out here, crawling through the snow and in the dead of night, in steel bullet magnets, not while they were being hunted. Colonel Wolf pivoted in his seat and stood in the cramped cabin, hunching his back as he carefully walked back to the second trailer, grasping at the shoulders of each trooper he passed, both to reassure them and to help him find his way in the darkness. When he had entered the second trailer, he felt the eyes of the seated fire team regard him, their faces only dimly illuminated by the open hatch a soldier stood out of in the center of the compartment. The frigid air washed into the trailer from the open hatch, 
giving the space a more severe chill than the driver's cabin. He gently tugged on the upright soldier's OCP pants. As she knelt, snow and ice came with her, the multicam parka frosted with snow and her goggles fogged from the temperature change. Sergeant Nagushba closed the hatch above her, pulled off her goggles and balaclava, revealing the clean lines of facial tattoos worn proudly by the Yupuk people indigenous to Alaska. What you got, Sergeant? Wolf spoke gently, gesturing to the PAS-13 thermal weapon sight mounted on her M4 carbine. Like night vision devices, thermal sights were rare and precious amongst the 297th Regional Support Group. With only a handful available, they were prioritized for spotting purposes. Of the six vehicles in the column, only the drivers had the aging PVS-14 night vision binoculars, and the only thermal sights were mounted to the spotter's rifles in the first and last vehicle. Nothing, sir. Not yet. Wolf gave his non-commissioned officer an empty smile. He pondered their circumstances. Roughly half of his unit was out here in the dark on their way to what might be a trap. The soldiers knew it, but they also knew they had no other choice but to take the potential bait. The enemy knew they would be out here somewhere. Having occupied the coastal regions and blockaded most of the corridors into the Canadian border, the Alaska National Guard and militias that were left had no choice but to stay constantly on the move within Alaska's interior. Sir? Yagushbuck roused Wolf from his deep thought. Sir, should we expect contact? The sergeant kept a strong face, but the frenzy in her eyes betrayed her worry. The fire team in the trailer perked up at the prospect. Engaging the enemy wasn't a new concept to the citizen soldiers of Alaska, but every trooper knew it was bound to happen again soon, and they'd be burying more of their comrades in the snow. Wolf weighed his words carefully. He refused to lie to the soldiers in his command that had already given up so much, but he also wasn't going to instill unnecessary panic. I don't think we will, Sergeant. Not yet. He did his best to convey confidence as he spoke with the young woman, loud enough for the team to hear, but not so loud as to seem boisterous. If the Ruskies had spotted us, they'd have sorted out already. Yagushbuk didn't respond, instead donning her goggles and balaclava, and opening the trailer's hatch to resume her watch. Wolf wasn't going to push the issue. They had been wrong about so much already, and every wrong move was one step closer to annihilation. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening to this experimental episode we're doing here on the pod. Again, this was a submission from at Wargunny on the Discord server. Uh, he's also a Patreon member. And if you want to have potentially your submissions, your stories, your screenplays um, in the setting of 2035, um, either help writing them, getting suggestions, getting editing, or even potentially getting them voiced and post posted to the pod, Feel free to um, DM me on Discord. If you're a Patreon member, of course, you're going to get some priority on that. Um, if you write and record and voice your own episode and you are fine with me giving you feedback and having edits so that I can make sure it stays within the theme, that is excellent. And I would always recommend you do that. I love posting other people's content on the podcast. Uh, again, we do have a Discord server. It's the New American Wasteland. Uh, if you're familiar with the TikTok, which is just at Letters from 2035 on TikTok, where well, there's a link tree there, we can get to the Discord. Uh, I don't think the link is anywhere else right now. Um, I don't have any other socials really. I just have the TikTok and then the podcast and then the Discord, of course. But again, thank you guys so much for listening. We might be doing more of this in the future. Please have a happy holiday, no matter what holiday you're celebrating. I, I don't really give a fuck which holiday it is, so long as you're having a good time. And stay safe out there. It's pretty crazy weather-wise in the U.S. right now. We're all getting hit with crazy blizzards and extremely cold weather. But other than that, good luck. Have fun. Thanks for listening.